Hello and welcome to this special video of the Beer Talks. I'm a beer guy, okay, John. And if my voice sounds croaky or a cough in fitness because I'm not feeling very, very well, uh, this video is going to be a review of part four of Halo Four Night to Dawn live action series. Now, before I start, this will contain spoilers, so if you haven't watched it, please go to the link in the description below. Go and watch the video and then come back and watch this, please, because I don't really want to ruin anything for you. You have been warned. I repeat that. You have been warned. So, uh, let's begin. So, uh, my I would like to say my part three review wasn't really good. I apologise for that. Uh, it wasn't really much of a review. It was more like a, a summary of the video where I just told you what happened and there was a few snippy comments in there. So, I apologise for that. So, what this part, this review of part four will be, it'll start with a summary of the episode, like what happened in the episode, then I'll go on to, into some details about what bits and points and what happened, and then I'll like to point out, make some points about parts of the video which I'd like to expand on, and then finish on, I'll give you a conclusion what I thought of the episode and how well it went. So, let's begin. Uh, the episode starts with, uh, well, I did part three finish. Part three started with uh, the base getting absolutely trampled by Coven. Excuse me. Oh yeah, getting trampled by Coven and um, not just kicking ass, literally kicking all the Marines ass, kicking the ODST's ass, kicking the Marines ass, and um, the cadets are running away, and Lask is just running, and the rest of them run into the barracks. <coughs> they do, and. Um, they run into the barracks to hide, and they run into Lassie's room because it's the only one that's actually open, as the rest of them are still locked and closed. And while they're in there, they're saying, what should we do? What should we do? Wow, what's going on? What's going on? Then they hear a scream just down the corridor as uh, a woman gets her inside mangled by a uh, elite sword. And uh, Lasky just peers around the door, and he sees uh, an elite there taking out his plastic sword out of a girl and just throwing her to the floor, and then disappearing as he turns invisible. No offence, that would shit scare me. I was like, the fuck is that? It's just going to be visible. Holy fucking shit! Yeah, literally like that. I literally shit my pants there and there. I would it's just, that would scare the crap out of anyone. And then as I was sitting there, just like, be quiet, be quiet. He at least just bashing in doors just to find these people. And then um, they go, right, what should we do? What should we do? And they think, oh, we've got to get to the barrack, we've got to get to the army, get some weapons, and start an offensive, etc., etc. So. They're sitting there, yeah, right, and uh, the Japanese guy, I apologize, I can't remember his name, he takes point, and um, he's going, right, I'll take point, and uh, he waits till it's clear, <coughs> as the elite smashes in another door looking for cadets, and uh, they run for him, they literally just run down the corridor all in one line, being really quiet, and then he just he puts his hand up and goes, he's shaking, literally the guy's shaking in the middle of the corridor, and all we hear is this breathing, we're like, this guy's screwed. And literally, the next thing we see is a Japanese man who's shit scared, just sitting there shaking, getting an elite sword through his chest by an invisible elite, and the rest of them just run off. So this guy was used, really used as cannon fodder. So he's like, yeah, it's alright, then we we'll just use this thing. And they run into the armory, they finally get there, and they're trying to close the door and not close them. It's like, crap, crap, so close So after a few bits and pieces, after Lasky's hitting the door, hitting the emergency communication for him to send out a beacon saying we're still alive finally gets the door closed like, yes now can they get our access to live ammo no the code won't work wow that's just crap in it code no no work and so they uh, just as they're trying to think of another plan what to do the elite comes knocking at the door and uh, they go shit we got hide they all go and hide and they're just hiding around but uh, Vickers gets trapped well not trapped he gets separate from the others and is hidden on his own around the corner and so while the elite's playing pat a cape with the door and finally goes right have enough fun and beats the crap out of him knocks it down he enters it while still invisible and he's just literally just walking forward and just like things are moving like yeah this is shit scary fucking scary but yeah that's just moving forward and he's like moving stuff this and this and, this. and like what should we do we've got to have to make a break for it and etc and then, um, as if as Vickers sees, oh, they haven't got any chance. He decides to make a distraction. Though, what a distraction! He makes literally a millisecond distraction. Goes, oh, bang! Elite just shoots him in the head. Game over. Well, that's pointless. Well done, Vickers. And then, as the elite's uncloaked, got his plasma sword, just slowly comes around the corner where Lasky and the rest of the cadets are, and he's just like showing it in Lasky's face, like, look at it, look at nice and shiny. And um, he's just like, ah, oh. but who knows who comes up. Master Chief from behind, kicks his ass, 
literally shoves a knife into his head, just rips his juggler out going, you guys are right, I'm the master chief, come with me. It's like, what are you doing here? Well, here, because you're the guys laughed the laugh on the planet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that kind of voice, not that kind of voice, but it says you're the guys left alive on the planet. <coughs> and I'm here to get you out. I think this guy's fucking... The the armour looks fantastic, I must admit. It looks absolutely brilliant. And uh, it just looks, like, pristine. It does, and it's, like, seven feet tall as well. Like, seven, eight feet tall, just to try and get in with the Master Chief, like look of a spine which is like fucking tours and everything but yeah he um they asked him why haven't you got out of here he said um we can't get any live ammo chief just walks up to live ammo co code i don't know you have fucking code this is my code sticks his fist from the doors and rips them off and goes gear up and so the cadets all gear up and they follow chief out into the corridor uh, as chief just walking forward freaking confident as anything like i don't give a shit i'll take on anything in front of me it's hilarious, I love it. It's just like, it's like oh, I don't take no shit from anyone. And he's walking through it and he goes, stay here, I'm just going to check it out. Don't move. I was like, wow. So Chief goes walking off and um, the cadet's just sitting there going, Chief, come back, please. Yeah, so it could have been a bit better than that. But yeah, he's just like, and then he comes walking back, let's go, there's a water hole over here. So right, and they go, as they're walking across the bridge, uh, jackals appear from the top and start shooting at him like they usually do from the sniper positions and they all take cover and funny enough they almost run out of ammo literally every cadet runs out of ammo almost instantaneously so what they only have one clip why would you only be one clip of ammo and you're going to go and face these things <coughs> chief goes to him stay here Lasky get to the water I'm going to go and so Lasky takes a run while everyone else covers him and gets to the water walk and he sees General Black just sitting there dead as anything, it's like, wow, you're worthless, <laughs> shoving him out of the water and goes and tries to get into it, trying to start it somehow, and somehow just admit, why do we win? Sorry, say like that. And, um, oh, fucking chest, sorry. Bit of a cold still. And, uh, tries to make it still, and Chief's still nowhere to be seen, and the rest of the cadets have run out of ammo, and they're like, crap, what should we do, what should we do, what should we do? And, uh, I can't remember her name, but the woman, the girlfriend of Lasky, picks up uh, one of the uh, the rifles and start one of the alien rifles starts shooting back at him. Wow, I'm terrible at this, but yeah, starts shooting back at him. Wow, and his play, and it's pretty good shot as well. Sorry, my laptop's just about to shut down for some apparent reason, which is stupid. Oh, well. but yeah, I apologize about that. But yeah. So, Chief goes disappearing and uh, goes walking off. And they're like, oh shit, we've run out of ammo, what should we do? And she takes out a, a uh, jack or two with the uh, the alien the alien needle rifle. It's like, oh yes, come on. Carbine rifle, bloody hell. I'll get there in the end, don't I? But yeah, she takes out a few of them. It's like, wow, this thing's awesome. And uh, while sitting there, they're going, right, well, we've got to get to the wall, but we've got no cover. And the Chief above them just goes, Comes walk along with one hand pistol, just taking them out with a fucking magnum. One and both eyes. Now that's just fucking kick ass. Sitting there walking along, going bang, 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 and they all run to it as Chief gives them cover to the wall. They all jump to the wall, and then just as Chief gets to the end and an explosion comes up behind him, he jumps into the back of the minigun and goes, Go! And he just like Lasky guns it, and they go into the forest, and that's the end of the episode. So, that's my summary of the episode. And uh, some points. I love to point out to you. <coughs> well, I um, try and help my cough. Is um, is uh, I love the bought in the elites. The the armor and everything looks fantastic. It looks all lit up, and their ability as well, like the invisibility, is like literally zoom gone. And that's what they are. It's, I love it. I love it. And, that, and the plasma sword looks so real. It looks fantastic, and it's just I love it. Like they're taking so much deal, and they probably like made the armor proper armor for the elites and then put like a like green skin uh, like a green colour skin on the inside they have and um, then put the rest in by VA, VFX they have so that's pretty good and my laptop's died that's what you get ladies and gentlemen for having a power supply which is crap but yeah uh, so uh, the last bit I love about the elites is like they're sitting there going wow what's going on so I love it. It's just like how how much detail they've took over the Covenant. You haven't seen a jackal completely up front, like close up front yet, but the elites we have 
and I must admit they look fantastic. And then on and on I like to say why did the Covenant come to this planet? Why this one? I know they started they had the halo the war between the Covenant thing, they started attacking like the like the furthest planets away from Earth. They did, and uh, so this planet could be one of them. But why did they wipe out the entire planet? And also, was there any other civilizations on there? But was there cities? Were there towns? Everything around the planet? Was there anything else, or was it just this one base for training cadets? Or was there other bases on the planet? Who knows? I, I don't really know. They don't really explain that. So that's a that's a point I'd like to ask you. Do you think that like there are other cities on the planet? Do you think there's like a another a population on the planet except for what there's this base, or do you think it's just like these bases dotted around for training purposes? Uh, it's just. It would be interesting to know. Also, uh, why is Master Chief there? Did Master Chief just go in to save them? Because they, they come up, they got, um, a distress weekend. Did Master Chief just go in to save them? <coughs> Excuse me. Did they just go in to save... Did he just go in to save those cadets because everyone else on the planet was dead? Or was he there for a reason? Was he there to test his abilities against this new alien threat or fight off this new alien threat? I, I don't know, it's, it's rather interesting. What do you think? Do you think he was there just to save cadets or was he there just to, or was he sent there just to test out his uh, like his abilities? And also, w we've learnt that Master Chief already has his name before the, the Halo games. He has already has his name ready and done before any Halo, so he's already called Master Chief. So what made him, what, what part of it, what made him give him name Master Chief? Because if you watch the Halo Lens uh, uh, vi like video, there's a little short in there as well about the Covenant and Spartans that, and it shows he's already got his Master Chief uh, name there as well. So, so what? What did he do to get this thing? Was he because he was one of the first one? Because he's he was one of the first Spartans ever made or something like that. I don't know. It'd, it'd be interesting to know. What do you think? Do you think he was given that name for a reason, or or do you think he was just um, lucky and just called Master Chief? Who knows? So. Uh, those are a few points I'd like to bring up. I'd like to hear your thoughts on them. Uh, so to conclude, I must admit, part three was alright. Part part four though, kicking into high gear, ladies and gentlemen. High gear. This is it. This is the fight we want. This is the fight. This is just going to be kick ass. Gut. This is just going to be shooting left, right, and centre. It's going to show what Marines are made of, and showing that humans will not give up, even though we've got. Un against an unwarned force. Sorry about that. They decided to start cutting the grass outside. That's stupid. But yeah. Um, so yeah. In conclusion, fantastic part. Can't wait for part five because there are parts which are <coughs> which I like them to uh, expand on, but I don't think they will do in part five. But I'm still looking forward to part five. So part four to me, brilliant. Uh, like addition to the to the rest of the series. And uh, I'm looking forward to part five, and I believe uh, everyone else should be looking for part five, because part four, literally, science still delivers the goods, and now I want more. Simple bloody ass. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this review of part four, Ford. Ha f part four review of Halo Ford Unto Dawn, and uh, I'd like to uh, hope you're all having a great day, and say goodbye. Right, bye bye, people. Bye bye. Keep calm, people. Grow beers, great awesome. By the way.